we thank you for this time. Baba dupele wa yifu wa kukubayi. Lay your hands upon us here. Eda wa yile wa nini. Open our understanding. Esi o niwa. In Jesus name we pray. Ni ulu po Jesu. Let's have a sing God bless you. Eje kajo ko ulu wa yobu kufu wa. We're starting a new series in our school on Sunday. Today, we're starting a series called The the Power of the Fearless Life. The Power of the Fearless Life. Sisters, what did I say? Can I hear the sister shouting like evangelist? Brothers, what did I say? The power of a fearless life. And I believe that the Lord whom you serve shall bless you with it. In Second Timothy chapter one verse seven. Nini we Timothy kaji ori kini esekaji. Second Timothy chapter one verse seven. In we Timothy kini ori kini. It's very short verse of scripture. Esi orolo ronto kuru loko loko. But it's highly loaded. Short verse of scripture. Esi orolo ronto. But highly loaded. Second Timothy. Chapter 1, verse 7. If you are there, say yes. Everybody there? Now let's read it together. God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound man. Can you read it again? Straight away, Tara. You can see that there is a spirit called the spirit of fear. Fear Fear is the commonest demon in the world. He said, But God has not given us the spirit of fear. But what he has given us is the spirit of power, of love, and the spirit of a sound mind. Meaning that if you want to counter that spirit of fear, you need three other spirits to counter it. The spirit of power. The spirit of love. The spirit of a sound mind. He has not given us one spirit, spirit of fear. He has given us three instead of that one. Power Agbara, love, ife, sound, mind. There is an epidemic of worry and anxiety that has enveloped everyone, including nations of the world. Fear has now caged so many. And we see fear in every corner. Fear in the economy. Fear in health. Fear in politics. Fear in education. Fear in Fear at the unemployment level. Fear of the raging diseases. Beloved, the fact that you woke up this morning, you lifted your hand, they were liftable. You lifted your legs, they were liftable. You got down and walked to this place. You should really thank God. If you go to an average hospital, 
Now the hospital I jammed. You go there, no bed. Not only in Nigeria, even in developed countries, patients are discharged to go home and go and die. And there are many, many diseases that doctors don't understand. To even worsen the situation, many doctors themselves are sick. They are sick. The same sickness they are treating is killing them. Rage of diseases is causing fear. It's causing fear. Any tiny swelling in the body of some people now is enough to cause sleepless nights because of fear. Crime is also a source of fear. Wars is always a source of fear. This is why I'm prophesying upon the lives of those who are calling for war in Nigeria. That the angels of God should go and war against them. It's easy to be shouting war, but war is a very bad thing. If you have experience, you know that it's not something that you enjoy. War is very, very bad. And People are saying, hey, there will be war, there will be war, there will be war. Let the angels of God go and put the war in their lives and not in the life of others. It's a terrible situation when there, there is war. And may the Lord envelope us with the blood of Jesus. So war is a conflict and a lot of people are afraid of it those who have never really seen one that they weren't calling for war calling for war during the last Nigerian civil war we hid somebody in our house who we should not hide there was the enemy of the Loyal forces. But he ran to our house for cover. And so we hid him. Some people went and told Nigerian soldiers that we are hiding somebody here. They bombarded our house with leaves on their helmets, looking aggressive. So we hear that you are hiding an enemy here. If we search this place and find him, all of you are gone. That's what they said. And they shot into the air to tell us that they were serious. But fortunately, the man was at the back of the house. We quickly, somebody ran to him and relocated him to our toilet. We had two toilets in that house. Back there in Akure. One toilet had been locked up for years because the maggot there were senior citizens. And it was swimming with feces. Nobody has gone there for years. It was there the man hid. So they came, searched every room, look under the bed. We were praying hard as they were going towards the toilet. So they only opened the good toilet. When they saw the other one, they said, Hey, face. And they went back. That is war. So those who are clamoring for war, <laughs> you better be careful. There is conflict around the world. 
and the conflict is causing fear that is increasing rates of terrorism is causing real fear even the weather too is running mad now all of a sudden some rain will start it will not stop it will stop it will start sweeping people away there is plenty of uncertainty and it's causing fear but the Bible says for God has not given us the spirit of fear but of power of love and of his son Shakespeare who I'm not sure whether he's a Christian or not said cowards die many times before their death Jesus said he who will want to save his life shall lose it so there is no point to fear God wants his children to be fearless. Every day, the news media brings us stories of war designed to cause fear. All this terror, terror, terror are talking about is just fear, just creating fear. So the world is becoming more and more fearful every day. To now worsen the situation. Most of us now had a list of personal worries and fears. So what is already on ground? What I said. I said most of us now had that fear to our personal fears. And we fear things that mostly do not materialize. Mostly do not materialize. And we waste so much resources and time fearing things that never materialize. A king in Yoruba land ran to me here one day and said in his dream, he had a dream some people were running after him and they said we must remove him from this throne and they were dragging him they took his crown his walking staff they removed it they were using it to knock his head that was a dream he had he now phoned one of his friends and told the friend the dream the man goes to Catholic church when I said ah that kind of dream go and look for mountain of fire but instead of the king to come here quick when he woke up in the morning he wrote to police to give him security so he arranged security mobile police all around the palace he did not know that the enemy is not physical it was spiritual so fear drove him to do that he has arranged mobile police outside so he he felt secured he had forgotten the scriptures that says woe unto him that put his trust in man whose breath is in his nostril in the night 1 a.m. a naked man walked into his bedroom carrying a pot of fetish power charms and said I've been sent here to destroy you I said, eh? how did you enter? Ah, didn't you see police? That one said, I am more than the police. I said, ah. 
Blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. Then he said, as he was saying that, the thing was becoming powerless. And then disappeared. He ran here the next month. I'm praying for you. At any power that does not want to give you peace, their own peace shall be withdrawn now. In the name of Jesus, let that man roar like thunder. Bottom line, and note my words by research, serious. Scientific research, serious sociological research. Only about ten percent of our worries actually has the possibility of happening. Only ten percent of all those who worry about has the possibility of happening. If you want to prove what I'm saying, you take your Bible. Look at all those things you worried about last year. How many of it happened? Some didn't believe they would cross to this year. They this year. Some didn't believe they would celebrate their birthday. They celebrated it. Some didn't believe they could have children. They have it. Some didn't believe they could marry. They married. Some didn't believe they could pass the exam. They passed. All those things that they used that have been worrying their head and scattering the brain last year. How many of them came to pass? So only about ten percent of our worries actually has the possibility of happening at all. So this is why I decree upon your life. Right there where you are, receive the power to live a fearless life. You seek the power to live a fearless life in the name of Jesus. life here. I sack that king in the name of Jesus. Every fear militating against your life is banished now in the name of Jesus. The truth the blunt truth is that you can live with courage in every situation you face in every situation you face and you can face any fear and overcome the fear that is the truth of scripture you can live your life fearlessly you can live your life worry free you can take divinely inspired risks and succeed you take a divinely inspired risk and succeed you do not have to settle for a life ruled by fear. 
a life ruled by fear. Cancer too. A woman went to the gynecologist. The woman comes from Mountain of Fire here. She wasn't married at that time. She was 36. And, the, and she was having pains in her tummy. So she went to the gynecologist. And the gynecologist had very bad news for her. The gynecologist said, Are you married? He said, No. I said, Okay, if you are not married yet, don't bother. Don't bother. Because you can't have any children. Because this fibroid have taken over all your womb. And right now, your only option is for us to remove the whole womb. Nobody can do this surgery. Because it's big. It is attached to the wrong place. So there is nothing we can do. She left the place. Went to a second doctor. Who said the same thing. Went to a third doctor. Who said the same thing. All of them putting fear into her heart. Then she came across this scripture we read this morning. And listened to one message preached here. The message was connecting to the awesome God. Connecting to the awesome God. And she had me say that there is nothing God has created that He cannot pan a bit. And that in His warehouse, He has spare parts or organs of the body. So the first thing she conquered was the fear based on the words those doctors have said. One day, after praying on the corridor here, she prayed on the, on the corridor at the back here, she got home. Serious stomach stomach cramp started. It was terrible. She thought she was going to the, to poo in the toilet. She ran to the toilet. But instead of pooing, a huge mass just fell out of the womb. She was afraid. She was scared. It looked like a huge ball came out. And all the pains stopped. She ran to the doctor. Doctor did another scan. And the doctor was getting angry. So, who was the first doctor you saw here? See the doctor over there. And the doctor said, You have fibroid? Because it's what is in your paper here. Say yes. Say it has occupied the womb. Occupied the womb. She said, I should remove the whole womb. So the doctor said, I should remove the old woman. The doctor said, the, this new doctor said, no, I can't see any fibroid. How can they remove your womb when there is no fibroid? It became a heated argument between the two doctors. I saw fibroid. I said, there is nothing here. Don't put this hospital into trouble. The woman said, don't quarrel. Let me, let me settle the quarrel. This is the power of the awesome God. He has done the surgery. I'm praying for anyone here that there is something in your body that is scaring you. Let the power of the great physician visit you to right there where you are in the name of Jesus. A savu for the man. So you do not have 
to settle for a life ruled by fear you do not have to get used to the dark no there is one mystery about staying in the dark if the whole of a place is in darkness and a person stays long enough in that darkness after some time you will begin to see in the darkness don't get used to darkness it is a tragedy to get to the end of your life and that you have left part of your life untapped because of fear the reason many are not prophets and prophetesses they are afraid what if I prophesy and it did not come to pass what would they say so they refuse to step out of their boat God has all weapons in his armory to defeat your fears and make you live the fearless life God has given you everything you need to defeat your fears I agree that it's not possible to live life without some fears here and there. But every fear that enslaves is not from God. Somebody wants to cross the road now and you are waiting for the vehicle to pass. It's because you fear that if you go there, they will run you over. So that's good fear. But when there is enslaving fear, it is something else. That's why somebody has said fear is false evidence appearing real. F-E-A-R false evidence appearing real. Fear oppressed in two basic departments. Department one fear that you will not get what you need. Two fear of not holding on to what you have but whatever format that fear is scripture says God has not given us the spirit of fear but of power of love and of a sound man he says he gave beauty ashes. He gave the oil of joy for mourning. He gave the garment of praise instead of the garment of heaviness. Instead of the spirit of heaviness. And God wants to take all fears away from our mind. I'm praying for anyone here being ruled day by day with all forms of fear that the Lord whom you serve will cause great deliverance to happen into your life in the name of Jesus. A sevenfold amen. Worry. Did that is the senior brother of fear. Worry is a life robber. Worry is a killer. In fact, one of the greatest problems of mankind is worry. Worry is a monster that saps our joy. Worry is profitless weight. Worry is one of the greatest sources of human suffering and distresses. Worry is fear. 
Worry is fear. But that worry, who is also a peace killer, that worry, who makes people to get into crisis before the crisis even happens, is actually a choice. You can choose to become worried. You can choose not to become worried. Rise to your feet now, beloved. There are prayers we need to pray. And pray it with fire and with power. Jesus is here. Jesus. His power is here. The first sin is to fire back the arrow of the spirit. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Lay your hands on your chest, and then with a voice that will certainly embarrass your neighbor. Say, I fire back! Your voice is not loud enough. Every hour of fear in the name of Jesus. My friend, I believe you have been mightily blessed by listening to this message. In case you are watching this telecast and you have not yet surrendered your life to Jesus, I would like to give you that opportunity. Right there where you are, bow down your heads and say what I'm going to say after me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. Lord Jesus, forgive my sins. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Take control of my life. As from today, I say bye-bye to the devil. I enter into the kingdom of light. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that short prayer with me, I'm going to pray with you now. Father, I commit these your children who have surrendered their lives unto your holy hands unto you. Father, uphold them by your power. Lay your hands upon them. Write their names in the book of life. Keep them standing by your power. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for watching this program. Remember, If the enemy has stolen from you, recovery is by force. God bless you.